Good morning, everyone. Thanks for bearing with us this morning as we getting started a few minutes late. I apologize for that. I'm Laura Vermilia, a controller here at the OHSAA. Um, sitting with me is Claire Decker king from our ticketing manager, and Brooke Downing from Hometown Ticketing. Um, and we're going to um, present to you this morning uh, regarding cash procedures related to OHSAA tournament events. Um, most, I'm sure everyone on the call is aware that House Bill 33 that passed at the end of June um, requiring qualified schools to uh, accept cash at school events. Um, although the OHSAA was not specifically named or is applicable to that House Bill in the spirit of the bill and um, in conjunction with um, our schools, we have made the determination at events that the OHSAA um, is hosting at a high school venue, uh, we will accept cash at the gate. Um, so obviously that has ramifications for you, our schools. Uh, we put together a presentation here this morning to um, kind of set through what we're talking about. So we're going to talk about the admission to OHSA tournament events, um, the selling and scanning at the gate, uh, reporting and payment, and uh, Brooke from hometown will do a little demo and then um, question and answers. If you do have questions today throughout the presentation, uh, please use the chat feature um, and Ronald Sayers it will um, read those to us and uh, will and or type in uh, any answers that we have as we go through. Okay, so tickets will be available online for all of our OHSA tournament events. That's very similar to what we've done in the last several years. Um, there will be no change to that. Um, and online tickets will be available um, through the start and into usually halftime or um, a set time within the event. There's no change to that. Fans can still use their phone, use their laptop, use their tablet to um, buy tickets. Um, OHSAA tournament events held at high schools will have to have tickets available for sale at the gate. So um, we're showing here our online ticket prices that have been approved for fall. These are fall 2023 season ticket prices. Um, we have gate pricing at a high school venue, whether it's sectional district, regional, or state, and then all online tickets will be discounted um, at 20% for adults, so 8, 12, and 16, and then student ticket price of 5, 9, and 13, um, similar pricing to what we had last year. Um, this will encourage folks to to buy early, buy ahead, use their phone um, at the gate and purchase um, versus paying cash um, to your staff at the gate. So just a reminder too that our football and field hockey tournament games prior to the state semifinals are all regional level events. Um, our sport administrators and district personnel that put out the tournament annuals by sport, um, hopefully I've included um, these prices or the, the, at least the um, highlights of um, confirming whether or not we're selling at the gate. So again, high school venues only. So how will this work? Um, currently, if you host one of our events, I've hosted in the past, um, uh, you receive login credentials for the Hometown Gate app, which has given you the ability to scan tickets. Um, that will still be the case. You'll receive those credentials 
that will allow you to scan and scanning of tickets will continue. But those same login credentials will also um, give you the ability to sell tickets through the hometown app and obtain an auto report. All cash gate sales must go through the hometown application. There will not be paper tickets or um, uh, reporting outside of hometown. Um, we encourage you to have a single gate that has tickets available for cash. Therefore, you would only need one cash box. Um, you know, that's again a, a best practice. Um, that, that we're asking. And then also we recommend at the gate that is selling the tickets to have a dedicated scanning person. So someone who is scanning in people who've already purchased their um, ticket online and then a seller that is taking the cash. Um, that person could also scan, but then you have one dedicated person at that, at that gate. Again, that's a best practice. Um, you will scan all fan tickets as normal. Um, the tickets that will be sold for cash will be automatically checked in. Um, so that means the gate app, there's a setting within the gate app that we're going to demonstrate um, here in a little bit that will auto check in the tickets sold for cash. And we'll show you how to enable that. And once you enable it um, for the event, it's enabled. It's a one time setting. Um, we're asking that your start cash is mainly $5 since our pricing is 10, 15, and 20. Um, the ticket audit report, which will be very important for um, you as ADs as well as your school treasurer. Um, and um, you probably want to maintain those even after the fact until your um, uh, school audit is complete. But that report will be available on the app until 11.59 p.m. day of the game. You can take a screenshot of that. You can print it. You can email it to yourself. You can text it to yourself, to someone. Um, it's all available. You just need to be sure that you do that by 11.59 p.m. If you were to forget, you would need to reach out to Claire or myself the next day to get that report. Um, but you're not going to be able to reconcile your cash without it. So um, that report will show you how many tickets you sold. Say you sold 10 tickets and the amount of money collected. Um, and so you would reconcile that to the ticket audit report, obviously less the start bank uh, that you started with. And then that ticket audit report would be validation for your school treasurer. Um, and then you would provide them with uh, cash collected. You will also need that report um, because we are asking you to include that on the Google Doc information that you will complete in order to receive your hosting check. So um, if you recall last year, most of the districts and um, here in Columbus for regional games, we asked you to complete a Google Doc um, financial report. We will be asking you how many tickets you sold and how much cash you collected on that report. Um, also, if your cash exceeded the hometown audit report, which we will have visibility to the audit report, please indicate that as a overage on the Google Doc. Um, so once you submit your Google Doc, we will validate that to the hometown ticket report on our end. And the hosting fee, less any cash you collected for ticket sales, uh, we will remit payment to your school. If you collect more cash sales um, than your hosting fee, then we will ask that you remit that within two weeks um, and include in there a reference to the game and the sport hosted. Questions? Yes, um, I, I mean, learned okay. okay, so now we're going to um, have a demo by Brooke.
Thank you. Again, my name is Brooke Downey. I'm the Senior Client Success Manager at Hometown Ticketing, and I work specifically with the OHSA. I want to go through kind of the procedures that we have in place for you guys to be able to not only scan in tickets that were sold, but also sell cash tickets and also use the audit report for reconciliation purposes. Um, as Laura mentioned, you know, we're going to be able to scan tickets, sell tickets, and obtain user reports for reconciliation all through the Hometown Ticketing Gate app. Uh, the Gate app is compatible with both iOS and Android devices. It's going to need to be operating on at least version 3.14.0, and that's set to come out by the end of this week. Um, this new version is what's going to enable you guys to be able to export that user report for auditing purposes. So just when you start hosting events, make sure that you have the most updated app available. Um, as normal, you know, we've been doing this the past couple years. Scanning tickets is going to be the same as it always has been. Uh, but now you guys are also going to have the ability to sell tickets and access a user report for reconciliation that, as Laura mentioned, will be available until 11.59 p.m. the day of the event. Um, and again, just reiterating that you'll be able to save this, you'll be able to print it, email it, text it, airdrop, really whatever form is available to the device that you're using, you'll be able to get it that way. Going into it a little bit, I wanted to show you guys who are not aware or maybe not familiar with the app, what it looks like. Um, these are some screenshots up here. Like Laura mentioned, you're going to have a unique username and password that is specific to your venue that will then allow you access into the gate app. Um, and again, Claire will be sending out emails a couple days before the event that will have this information along with a one pager and a checklist of things that you need to do. So that way you are fully prepared to be able to um, scan tickets and sell tickets. Uh, once you log in, you see the screen here in the middle. It's going to have a list of all upcoming events. Um, once you choose the event that you want to do, this is where it starts looking a little bit different from seasons past. So in the past, you used to only be able to scan tickets. Now we're going to have three options, all three of which you will use at some point. So you're going to be able to scan tickets, sell tickets, or go into the event management tab, which is where our audit report is going to be. So on the left here, this is what it typically looks like if you go to scan tickets. It opens up the camera, and you will be able to you know, point and shoot basically at the QR code. Something I do want to mention, it's always worth making sure people are aware, for whatever reason, if somebody doesn't have their ticket on them um, or their phone is dead or, or whatever reason they can't produce it, you can use this icon, the magnifying icon up here in the top right corner to search by name so you are able to access the guest list. Now, on the right side, this is where we start getting into selling tickets. If you were to choose sell tickets, this first option is going, or this option over here is going to show up. The most important thing you need to do first is select the settings gear in the top right corner. This is where we do the toggle on of the auto check-in. As Laura mentioned, if you are selling tickets for cash, we don't want to have to worry about, you know, you're selling it to them and then they have to get the ticket and you have to check it in. By toggling this on, you're going to automatically check in any ticket that is sold via the POS unit, so point of sale. So any cash ticket that you sell, is going to automatically be checked in. Once you turn this on, it'll stay on, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, but I just want to make sure that we call out for you guys to make sure that this setting is turned on before you start selling tickets. So going into the actual process of selling, this is what it currently looks like. We're hoping to not have um, the other options available once it gets to you guys. But as you can see, the gate ticket is what you guys are going to be selling um, because, of course, you're selling at the gate. These other ones are online, or as all of you administrators know, there's also the school comps that are available through um, the embed. But basically, when you go to sell tickets, all you have to do is enter the quantity that the person wants. Uh, you can use the plus or the minus button. It's going to show you. And then on the right-hand side, it's going to tell you, uh, how much you have, and then you have the option that turns green to take cash. So once you click that button, it's going to ask you to enter how much the fan has given you. So there is some preset options, um, and then, you know, for whatever reason, if the fan gives you more money uh, or a different amount that is not listed, you can hit that keypad button right here and enter in the total that they gave you. 
Um, down at the bottom, it's going to tell you the order total and then whatever amount you put in, how much they gave you. And if the thing that requires change, it'll tell you how much change you need to give them. Once this has been entered, this process order cash will turn green and you will select that. And then you'll get this screen saying that your order was complete. Um, typically, maybe you know, 95% of the time, people will just want to go in. So you're going to hit done because, again, we already toggled on the auto check-in. There's no need for them to get their tickets and have them scanned. If somebody does need a receipt to order tickets for any reason, whether it be you know, they need to expense them or anything like that, this is where we have the email tickets and receipts, and they will need to provide an email address to which they can then send the, um, the ticket or email receipts with the tickets. Um, like I said, though, 99% of the time, you're probably just going to hit done and move on to the next person. So now we're going to get into the game is over, or you're done scanning, you're done selling, and it's time to get that reconciliation report to be able to um, finish up the game. So if you chose that event management, that third tab that we talked about on the home screen once you opened up the gate app, um, you're going to see these three options. What you guys want is the user report. So that's the very first one, and you're going to select it. What comes up next is basically a, um, it's, it's, it's the event audit that we're going to be using. Uh, all this information is already filled in with what you need, the start date, and the end date are basically going to be that whole day of the event. It's going to run an audit report for uh, everything that was sold at the gate. So as you can see, I would show you cash sales. Um, if anybody was accepting credit card sales at the gate, I know a few of you out there do use hometown and have to try credit card readers or show those that were taken at the gate. Um, and then up here in this top right corner, we see the download button. Once you click that, it's going to give you any option that your device allows to export um, this report. So again, you can save it, you can print it, uh, email it, text it, airdrop it, really whatever you need to do. Um, and then I want to show you guys a demo of kind of what it looks like in full process here. Let me get this video pulled up for us. One second here. So um, what we're seeing here is the, um, the video of what it would look like for when you're going to pull this report. So again, um, you go into the user report, you're going to hit that export button. Um, and what we'll see here as we move a little bit forward is it's going to pull up. It's going to tell you the cash quantity, like we talked about, how many tickets were sold for cash, how much cash was collected. Um, again, if anybody was using a credit card reader, it would tell you how many you sold and how much money was collected. Um, and just reiterating here that this is only the tickets that are sold at the gate. This is not inclusive of everything that was sold online. It is only the tickets that have been sell, sold at the gate by the user. Um, so then once you're there, you can hit that button. And again, as you can see, there's all these different options that you have, whether you want to print it, save it to files, you can text it, you can email it, anything that you guys have available on that device. Um, and again, it's available until 11.59 p.m. Uh, game day to be able to do this. And after that, if you still need it, you need to reach out to uh, Laura or Claire for me to reach us to obtain that. And that is all I have. Are there any specific questions? So, Brooke, if uh, someone is hosting <laughs> two volleyball games in a single night, will they print two reports? Great question, yes. So it's going to be event specific. So even if you're the same site hosting multiple events, you're going to want to pull that report twice, one for the first game, one for the second game, so forth and so on. Um, there's one other question regarding this. There's even a bunch of questions here um, that we'll get to one um, specifically that I want Brooke to answer. So it's, uh, does the auto check-in toggle need to be turned on for each device selling physical tickets? or turning on with one device turns it on for all devices? That's a great question. Each device specifically needs to have that turned on. So um, you have to make sure everyone that you're using will be turned on. So if um, 
Mrs. Smith is selling tickets for an hour and then Mrs. Jones comes to sell tickets. Each of their devices needs to be. So long as they're using separate devices, yes, each one will have to have that call on. Great. Um, one of the other questions that we've had um, and we'll, we all start answering was about weather. Um, I would say if you are doing a weather dependent event, you may want to um, select the email or text tickets so that folks have that ticket to get back into the event. Um, so probably cross country perhaps here in the fall. Um, right now for fall, there may not be as many events as say um, spring. So um, we know we're gonna be learning throughout this process as well. So um, we do would like to hear your feedback as we get into this. And I know many of you have already been um, taking tickets for cash at, at your gate and um, are probably more of an expert than us. So again, if we um, have missed something, please let us know. Other questions, Claire? Okay, um, we'll kind of go back to the beginning um, just because there's a lot of logistical questions about um, the app itself, but we have one question here. Will an invoice be sent to treasurers for processing the remittance to OHSAA? That's a great question. Um, we can certainly do that. Um, we've talked about that internally, whether or not that will be required um, by you, the schools. And we can certainly do that. And most likely, if we haven't received your money within that 10 business days, we will definitely send an invoice just so that we can track it better here. Um, I also want to mention, as Claire's queuing up the, the next uh, question, this session is being recorded um, and will be posted on the OHSA website um, in at least one place. So we'll probably post it on the tournament financial page um, on our website. In addition, we'll send the link out in the next administrator update, but we are recording this session and you'll be able to see the uh, PowerPoint in the demo. Okay. Um, just publishing additional questions. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. Got some few logistical specific ones. Um, a second looking at the ones coming in. All right, what's the ones we have now? Okay, so uh, we have a few questions about middle schools. Is being said applying to middle schools? We're kind of asking about middle school events. Um, so if you're hosting an OHSA tournament event and that is happening at your middle school field or middle school gym, then yes, you need to accept cash. If we, it is a middle school. Um, one of our middle school events of which we host two throughout the year, we will not be accepting cash at those events. Is it just a regular event you're hosting? You know, there's the separate regulation. Um, question here, if the state legislation exempts regional events from taking cash, why are you taking cash at football playoffs? Yeah, so the OHSAA is not a qualified school. So therefore we do not um, legally, the house bill does not apply to us. Uh, we are doing it in the spirit of the law um, to ensure that um, there's not, you know, additional regulations coming down. In addition, uh, most Europeans have been coming to your games um, expecting to pay cash um, just because you're hosting one of our events. Um, our thought is that they, that expectation will still exist and um, thinking as it would be easier than at the gate um, for your gate sellers versus saying no, no cash. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, <clears throat> we have I think two questions about um, selling via credit card. So uh, this is for schools that are already hometown ticketing clients and might have credit card readers. So what is about the ticket prices? Others just about the um, you know, logistics. So sure. So um, last year uh, there was about 50-ish schools that use hometown in their regular season have equipment that have card readers that allow um, scanning um, of the card at the gate. We per permitted um, those schools that wanted to do that for our tournament games um, to do that. 
it, a sale at the gate is at the gate. So if you were to do that this year for football, it would still be the $15 um, versus having the fan, asking them to go online and use their, their phone um, and getting the discounted price. So right now we're kind of discouraging that use, um, but um, we're not gonna stop you. It's really up to the fan how they choose to do it. But if they hand you a credit card at the gate and you swipe it, it will be the $15 price. Okay. Um, another question here, how soon will athletic directors have access to our hometown ticketing apps within the trainer workers? So for a lot of the events, they don't exist yet because the C meetings haven't even happened. So in order for you to have access to the event, um, you know, a lot of other, you know, the brackets need to be done and the seating needs to happen. So as soon as all of that occurs um, and all the events start to get moved into hometown ticketing from Myosha, that's when uh, we'll be able to start sending you out the login information. Um, the videos and the training that Hometown Ticketing, you know, the uh, Brooks show and also that um, Hometown Ticketing has applies to, you know, stuff they have available already um, will be enough training for it. I think the only specific training is the for OHSA tournament events is the downloads of the user report, which would not be something that your average game worker will be doing. I mean, you know, depends on what your situation is. So as soon as you have the login codes, um, you can download the app onto the, a phone and log in and it will be turned on. Yep. Um, those three buttons, the scan, the sell, the report, or event management will be there. Um, it's just we you may not have the scan codes until we ha have the game set up. All right. Um, so another middle school question, if you already addressed. Um, <clears throat> so this question, if you have multiple people working at gate, will they all use the same login info so the report will total all together? Yes. For your event, there is one login, whether you have, um, you know, two gates or three gates or just one gate, people will be logging into the same thing and will all come together in the same report um, that you will download at the end of the night. Um, uh, no, you cannot use any other credit card machines. Only the ones that are compatible with hometown ticketing software will be able to be used. Um, which is the next question. Um, all right, so I got a specific question here that I can go for to answer. So just to clarify, the download export option is only included in the version 3.14.0 upgrade, correct? Yes, that is correct. So that was something that was added specifically for OHSA tournaments. So it is getting released, set to be released, I believe, tomorrow, um, but it'll be ready for you guys um, for when you start having your tournament events. Okay. Um, here is a question to come about the logistics. If the gym isn't clear for regional volleyball semifinals, how will the cash ticket taker know which game the fan is purchasing a ticket for? Will it be a place for cash ticket sellers to check which game? So uh, it will be based on whatever game they have selected. So if you recall in, um, on the actual gate app, it lists each event separately. So if they pick, you know, if they're selling for the first event, then that's what report it will show on. Um, the best practice would be to print both reports and reconcile that total um, for the night to the cash you have on hand unless you're going to switch it out each time, but that seems like some extra work. Okay, I think a similar question kind of going off to the spring, but uh, in the softball game, the baseball game, the same night. We're going to table spring for right now. Yeah, but I guess um, you don't need to have, a, you can have one, if you have one entrance to your venue, you need one gate, but if they're separate fields, then you need one person at each, just, just like normal uh, tournament events happen before, you need someone to be there. Um, <clears throat> I have a golf tournament manager here with me. Any non-school sites accepting cash? No. It's absolutely, absolutely not. No. Uh, question here, does the cost of online tickets include the hometown and Stripe account fees? So the cost of our tickets have not changed um, in several years. Uh, the OHSAA has always paid the hometown fee and the consumer, the fan, pays the strike fee. So um, just as an example, 
uh, if it's a sectional district game that they're buying an adult ticket online at eight dollars, they pay approximately eight dollars and forty cents um, is what the fan, fan pays. Versus if they were to walk to the gate, it would be ten dollars. Um, next question in logistics, uh, ticket gate typically outside of the gates and the event. If auto check is enabled and no ticket is texted email, how do people working the gates know they purchased a ticket? I think this is something kind of an event management thing that's specific to each school and venue. So something that you will um, I find a solution for that works best for your games and your events. Correct, Claire. I would say that what we've dealt with the majority of schools, their um, point of entry is right also where they sell tickets, but in this specific instance, it is not. So use it up to your discretion, right? If you know that the fan has to walk 100 feet to go show their proof of purchase, then yes, you would not want to enable auto check-in. But for probably 90% of our schools, where they purchase is also where they enter, they're going to want auto check-in on them. And every sale will have the text or email option, and you can definitely do that, and yep. the ticket will render right on the phone. Correct. All right, I think we answered this. We just wanted to make sure since it came up again. So if you have four gate workers working the same football game, does everyone do a report, or is it one report with the night? It's one report. Again, we would encourage a single cash box um, versus four cash boxes. Um, because you wouldn't know where the discrepancy occurred, but it all accumulates on a single event report. Um, just a quick logistical question again. Uh, so this will be a three plus minute process for each spectator that's paying cash. I think that's normally the duration of a transaction where you have to exchange money and make sure the accounting is correct. So I don't think it's three minutes, but it'll take the same amount of time it takes to do a cash transaction with anything, whether you're at the store, or, yeah. you know, at the movie theater. <clears throat> um, this is a question about regional cross country. Emphasizing again, if it's not a school campus. Correct. If it's at a college or university, we are not accepting that. Um, here is a question. Laura has always to say, heard anything from state auditor whether cash sales can be ran through the athletic fund or O22 fund like previous years? Great. Uh, that's a great question. I was waiting for that one to come up. So um, I have been in discussions at the the state editor's office has reached out to me on a couple of occasions in the last 30 ish days um, and we've had had discussions. Um, there is a possibility um, that they could be re re resurrecting the 022 accounts. Um, they have not issued a mem memo to that effect as of yet, but um, it is possible those could be coming. Uh, another question here, is it using a credit card an incentive not to use cash? I feel like I was stated at the regional meeting, different credit card price at the gate, um, if people are going to get destroyed. I mean, I'm sure there's a question there, so. Um, I think that the, Encourage people to pay online if they want to come up and pay and they want to pay the price of the gate. They have the freedom to use their phones or ahead of time purchase a ticket online, which has been the same for the last few years. Okay, another uh, question from Laura. Your gate, if you're at the gate sales, exceed the hosting fee, do we need a purchase order for the profit? That's really how your school operates, um, whether or not you need a purchase order. Will the addition of cash, with the addition of cash, will the OHSA be reimbursing for the additional workers? Uh, if your flat, if the flat fee stated um, causes your school to lose money by hosting our event, then you need to reach out to me or your district um, treasurer, your OHSAA district athletic treasurer, um, and you know, let us know about that situation. Our goal is for you not to lose money hosting one of our events ever. Um, this is a question about Friday night games and, and stuff about the app. I think that is um, kind of separate of the OHSA tournament events. We're only talking about um, you know, right now there's golf. Next week there'll be 
golf and tennis, and then the week after is when we start the um, more of the team sports. So that this question does not. Um, um, okay, logistical event question. Uh, not all school fields are close enough to school for Wi-Fi connection. What happens? Uh, you know when that happens. I think the past few years we've had to use uh, something an internet-enabled device to scan tickets. So, however you <coughs> in the past, however you've managed to do that, you continue to use that system. Correct. Scanning has always been a requirement of our events. So, um, what I say about that? Um, this is uh, is it possible about multiple ticket boxes because you have multiple gates entering into the stadium? That is, uh, again, up to you if you want to have more than one cash box, but the reporting will be an all-inclusive report. Um, again, that, that is up to you. Uh, okay. Uh, another question. Will the OHSA tournament financial report be different to include the cash sales? Yes, we are absolutely adding that. It will include, it will ask you how many tickets you sold at that event and how much cash you collected. <coughs> Uh, this person has asked twice. If we still have our own 22 account still based, can we use them? That is not my decision. Okay. Um, okay. Do we have anything else, Claire? No, no other questions that are um, relevant to the specific item and task I gave All right, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, again, we will post this and, and publish the link. Um, appreciate your willingness to work through this and partnership um, as we navigate um, this new challenge.